You better buckle up your seatbelt and pay close attention, because if you don't, you're going to get lost quick. Or maybe not necessarily get lost, but you're going to get overwhelmed with all this information. Recently, I made my top 25 college football team list heading into 2022, and I noticed something when I was doing all my research. Every single year of college football, there's always what? Four to five sound and really good quarterbacks. And if you want to say there's six or seven, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But in this up and coming season, it looks like there's going to be at minimum 11 to 12 really good quarterbacks. Let's start off with the obvious first. We know Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, and Caleb Williams are the top three. However, you want to order them, that's up to you, but we can all agree top three, no questions asked. But going down the list here, and I'll show you these rankings that the one three people put out. They got Quinn Ewers, Spencer Rattler, Tyler Van Dyke, Will Levis, KJ Jefferson, Brendan Armstrong, I've never heard of him, and Jackson Dart. And that's just their top 10. Now, that's not my top 10. I would probably switch it up a little. But you can look at all those guys and go, yeah, they're good quarterbacks. Will Levis for Kentucky. He's projected to be a top 15 pick. Tyler Van Dyke for Miami. He's predicted to be a dark horse for the Heisman and also a first round pick. Spencer Rattler doesn't need an introduction. We know he's good. Could he be great? I guess we'll have to wait and see. And Quinn Ewers. Have we seen Ewers play at the college level? No, but in high school, he was the number one overall ranked recruit. So I don't think it's too crazy to say he's going to be really good. A lot of people outside the SEC don't know this guy, but KG Jefferson for Arkansas, he's basically a mini Cam Newton. The only questionable one on this list are really the Two questionable ones is 9 and 10, Brennan Armstrong and Jackson Dart. I personally don't know a lot about the Armstrong kid, but Jackson Dart, he hasn't played too much, so I don't really know if he's going to be all too great. I've heard great things about him, but I haven't really seen it just yet. But if I had to put money on it, whether Jackson Dart's going to be good or bad, I'd say good. It doesn't just stop there. You also got Tanner McKee, who's a 6'5", 230-pound quarterback for Stanford. A lot of the pro scouts, they're liking what they see out of him, so I wouldn't be shocked if he's a fresh round pick there's also a couple more you could throw in there another one some people feel like could be good is max johnson and that's the former lsu quarterback who went to texas a&m oh yeah and how can i forget this what about that five-star recruit jj mccarthy that michigan's got he's supposed to be good i think you get the point at minimum at least in my opinion let me know in the comment section i think you're gonna have 10 to 11 really good slash great quarterbacks and it's so scattered out perfectly. You don't just got them all in the Southeast, Big Ten, or the Pac-12. It's all over the country. And we preach on it and harp on it a lot. College football, it lacks parity. And at the quarterback positions right here, we're starting to see some parity. Whenever I made that top 25 list and when I saw this picture you're seeing right now, that's when I really sat back and said, dang, we got some high-level quarterbacks coming into next year. I do want to speak on this Tyler Van Dyke kid. I didn't know too much about him last year, but as time continues to go on, there's more hype surrounding his name. And now, most recently, Mel Kiper Jr. predicted him to go number 12 in his early 2023 mock draft. The reason for that is simple. Go watch the film. Last year, for a Miami team that wasn't too good, he had 3,000 passing yards, 25 touchdowns to only 6 interceptions, and a QBR at 80.1. Those stats and numbers, it's not the most impressive part. This is. He's roughly 6'5 and 225 pounds. You want to talk about the ideal and perfect size for an NFL quarterback, that's it right there. He has great size and great arm talent. I wouldn't be shocked if he's a top 10, top 5 draft pick. The new head coach for Miami, Mr. Mario Cristobal, who came from Oregon, he even said, quote unquote, we think he's one of the best players in the country right now. So apparently, according to the head coach himself, he's been performing pretty solid in the offseason. If there's two quarterbacks in the entire country I would say pay attention to, it'd be KJ Jefferson from Arkansas and Tyler Van Dyke. We all know Spencer Rattler. That's going to be an interesting one to watch but we've seen him play before. The sleepers that nobody is talking about are those two guys I just told you. Will Levis for Kentucky, he's solid, but he's been getting hype. KJ Jefferson from Arkansas, I'm not too sold on the arm talent and accuracy just yet, but that man is built exactly like Cam Newton. I'll read you off his stats from last year since we brought up Tyler Van Dykes. He threw for nearly 2,700 yards, had 21 touchdowns to only four interceptions, and a QBR right at 76.7. And even though I'm not too sold on his accuracy, he still completed 67% of his passes. You do gotta keep into account a lot of those weren't deep balls, so that's why his accuracy was pretty high. Although Kayla Williams, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, and the Tyler Van Dyke kid, they're more polished than KJ Jefferson, 
I think Jefferson, he has so much potential that hasn't even been touched or unlocked. I'm telling you right now, 2022 is going to be the year of the quarterbacks. This might be a hot take, but I think in this up and coming season, this will be the best quarterback play we've ever seen in college football history. I think it's going to be incredible, and with offense being at an all time high, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Going back to Tyler Van Dyke, I forgot to talk about and mention this. I don't think Miami as a team, they're going to have a great year, but I think Tyler will. That program's got a lot, and I mean a lot, of rebranding and rebuilding to do. They got to get back to those early 1990s where people feared them and they just didn't want to play them. Nowadays, people aren't scared. I think Mario Cristobal, he's the right guy to bring back that rugged play style, but it's going to take some time. Here's another reason why I think college football is going to be unreal this year. The difference in the up and coming year from all the previous 5, 10, 15 ones we've had, we got different teams with high expectations. Every single year for the past 10 years, years it's been Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and Oklahoma with high expectations. There are some other teams you can plug and play there but for the most part it's been Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson. But this year now USC they have high expectations. Texas well they always have high expectations but Texas they're always going to be Texas. They will always, always, always disappoint. Even in this up and coming year, I think it's going to be better than last year, but they'll still somehow lose a game they shouldn't. Even with that being said, they have high expectations. And another team with another new quarterback is South Carolina. They have high expectations. Arkansas with KJ Jefferson and Sam Pittman. They have high expectations, and so does Tennessee, and that's three new SEC schools. Go back to last year around this time. South Carolina, Arkansas, and Tennessee, they had zero expectations going into the season. But now they all have those set expectations for one main reason. They all got a great quarterback. South Carolina, Spencer Rattler, Arkansas, KJ Jefferson, Tennessee, Hendon Hooker. Defense is important, and maybe I should talk about it more on this channel, but offense is king in my opinion. You will only go as far as your quarterback will take you in the NFL and at the college level. That's the case almost 99% of the time, and the other 1% is what we saw last year with Georgia when they have an historically speaking defense. 2022 is going to be the year of the quarterbacks, and I can't emphasize that enough. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. Last but not least, before we end off this video, I saw this on Twitter where Lane Kiffin he found a license plate where it says Tennessee and Ole Miss. For the caption, he said, I'm confused. Is this possible? Question mark, question mark. I've seen a ton of crazy tags and license plates in my life, but I've never seen something like that. I don't know where he saw that, but if he wouldn't have took a picture, I wouldn't have believed it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Before we end up this video, someone literally just tagged me in this. Apparently, Lane Kiffin is using fake trophies to recruit players to come to the quote unquote SIP. If you don't know what the SIP is, that's what he calls Ole Miss. And I guess this recruit got handed a trophy by Lane Kiffin and on it you can clearly tell he wrote on Sharpie, come to the sip. <sighs> if that's not the most Lane Kiffin thing ever, I don't know what is. Yeah, this was a short video, but I wanted to get it out there because I just think the quarterback play, it's going to be unreal. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know your thoughts down below. But that would be a beast. All right, you know the deal. Not going to lie to you guys. I need this video to get to eight minutes. So yes, let me, uh, you know, 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 you know